Hello and welcome to this math tutorial video. In this video we're continuing to work through the laws of indices worksheet so that we can see uh, exactly how we now start to use our laws of indices and those special cases that we saw in a previous video and uh, how to apply those to some uh, examples involving uh, numbers now in place of values for x. So let's start working through the questions. So the first question, question 1, uh, asks us to evaluate what is 4 to the power of minus 1. Now, of course, at this point, it would be very easy just to put this into a calculator. But actually, what you'll see as we work through this worksheet is that it's possible to answer all of these questions uh, without uh, resorting to the use of a calculator uh, if you know a few uh, fairly basic uh, uh, mathematical powers and roots. So let's make a little bit of a start on this. So we've got 4 to the power of minus 1. Now, we saw in a previous worksheet that uh, this is equal to... Uh, it'll be equal to the power of, uh, sorry, it'll be equal to 1 over 4. So wherever we've got a negative power, it becomes 1 over. And then the uh, power here, in this case 1, uh, becomes uh, down at the bottom here next to the 4. So this uh, is 4 to the power of 1. Again, I'm re emphasizing just this point about ghost numbers, it's like there's a little little ghostly 1 there that we don't normally write but 4 to the power of 1 is 4. So that gives us 1 to the power of 4. So our answer for the first question sorry, is 1 over 4. Uh, which you could write as a decimal if you want, 0 0.25, that's a fairly uh, reasonable decimal to handle. Obviously once we start getting uh, very long strings of decimal numbers it's simpler to leave it as a fraction and use that in your calculations instead. So let's have a look at question 2. We've got 4 to the power of minus 2. Now hopefully you've done all these questions already and you're just checking your answers uh, off against these to make sure that you've got it right. Uh, obviously the best way is to have a go yourself uh, and then uh, check it against the solutions contained in this video. So 4 to the power of minus 2, we've got a negative power so that's going to become 1 over and then we've got uh, the base number 4 and that uh, then becomes to the power of 2 so we simply lose that uh, negative value so we've got 1 over 4 squared. If any of this seems confusing like you don't really understand uh, what's happening here uh, then please see a previous video for this worksheet uh, relating to the uh, special cases of the laws of indices. So we've got 1 over 4 squared that can be written as 1 over 4 squared is 16 so we've got a sixteenth there. So as we've seen now to write this out as a decimal it's starting to get a little bit unwieldy so we'll just leave that as a sixteenth, which is quite nice. Question three, we've got 81 uh, to the power of a half. So 81 to the power of one half. And 81 to the power of one half, where we raise a number uh, to uh, the power of one over two. That becomes the square root of 81. So remember, this number here sits in the crook of this root symbol. We don't normally show uh, the squared value again. We've got a little ghost number 2 there okay, that we wouldn't normally write, but we'll just show it here for the sake of completeness. So we've got the square root of 81. Uh, and as we say, if you know the basic uh, square and root numbers, then you'll know that the square root of 81 is 9. So now let's have a look at question 4. Change my pen colour for this one. Uh, let's go for something a little bit darker. Go for a nice dark blue there. Ranging into the violet. Let's go for that. So we've got uh, 1 to this, uh, 1 over 6 rather. So we've got 1 over 6 to the power of 0. Uh, and 1 over 6 to the power of 0. Any number raised to the power of 0 is simply 1. So we've got 1 over 6 uh, to the power of 0 is equal to 1. I'm going to pick a slightly brighter colour for this next one. Okay. So now we've got the next question is 27 to the 1 over 3. So we've got 27 to the power of 1 over 3. So let's see what that will become. 27 to the power of 1 over 3. Uh, well, here again we've got a fraction as our power. So this number here becomes the root number. So that's going to be 27. Uh, the cube root of 27. So that 3 sits in the crook there of the root symbol and that tells us that this is the root of 27, the cube root of 27. And again if you know uh, your roots uh, then you'll know that the answer to that is uh, 3 because 3 cubed is equal to 27. 3 times 3 times 3 
gives you 27. So the cube root of 27 is 3. Question 6 now. We're going to build on this theme. We've got 27 to the power of 2 thirds. 27 to the power of 2 thirds. Now again we've got a fraction, so we are going to end up with uh, a root here. But before we get to that point, let's just see how we can do this in a couple of stages just to help us out. So we've got 27 uh, to the power of 2 over 3. So if we think about this like this, if we say, right, well, I've got uh, 27 to the power of 1 over 3, and then I can raise all of that to the second power. Because if we look up here at our third rule of the laws of indices, we've got x to the m to the n gives us x to the m times n. So if we go back the ways now, 27 to the 1 third squared, in order to uh, get rid of these brackets, we'd simply multiply that value by that value, and we'd end up with 2 thirds. So 27 to the power of 2 thirds is the same as 27 to the power of a third squared. So that then means that we can have a look at what's inside the bracket and say, right, so that's 27 to the power of a third. So as we saw over here on this previous question, that will simply become the third root, so the cube root of 27 squared. We know that the cube root of 27 is 3. And then we just, so this 3 represents what's inside the brackets, and then we're squaring it. So there's our 3, and we're squaring it which gives us an answer of 9. So that's nice and simple. So let's have a look now at question 7. Now in this one uh, we're flipping it up a little bit again. So in question 7 we've got 9 to the power of 3 over 2. 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So let's apply the same logic that we just applied here. We've got uh, 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So we've got uh, 9 to the power of a half and then we've got to the power of 3. So again just applying this rule here x to the m is equal to x to the m times n that gives us uh, 9 to the half to the power of 3 if we multiply these two numbers out according to the third rule of the laws of indices we can see that we'd end up with 3 over 2, 3 halves effectively. So what we can then say is that this will become 9 to the power of a half, well that's obviously the square root of 9, and then cubed. So we've got 9, uh, the square root of 9 which is 3, and then we're cubing it, and 3 cubed is 27. So 9 to the 3 over 2 is equal to 27. So there's our solution for question 7. For question 8, we've got uh, again a similar situation. Uh, 36 to the 3 over 2. So we've got 36 to the 3 over 2 and that is going to give us uh, 36 uh, to the half and we've got that raised to the third power. So 3 times a half gives us 3 halves, 3 over 2 and we end up with something that looks like this. So 36 to the half uh, becomes the square root of 36. So that's the square root of 36. And then we cube whatever's in there. So the square root of 36 is 6. And then we need to cube that whole thing. Uh, and 6 cubed is 216. 216. So that's the answer to question 8. Now for question 9, we've got 64 to the 2 sixths. Now this is quite an interesting question. Let's change pen colour again. Let's go for uh, something that's going to contrast quite nicely. Yellowy colour. So for this question, we've got 64 to the 2 sixths. So 64 to the 2 sixths. So if we look at this, we've got uh, 64. So we've got 64 to the sixth power, so we've got 64 uh, to the power of 1 over 6. So 64 to the power of 1 over 6 and then we're squaring it. So again multiplying out these two powers would give us 2 sixths. So uh, 64 to the power of 1 sixth, well we've got a fraction so that simply becomes the sixth root of 64 
and then we're going to square that. Now the sixth root of 64 looks a little bit daunting, uh, but the sixth root of 64 is actually 2. So we've got 2 squared, and that will give us 4. Now just an interesting point to note about this one, this isn't the next question, but what we could do is look at this fraction and think, well, could we simplify that fraction in any way? Well, if you know uh, anything about fractions, you'll know that that, could, that fraction could be written as one third, because uh, it's got a common factor of two. So dividing both of those, the two and the six by two, gives us one over three. And we, we can just see, obviously, two sixths is the same as one third. But will that give us the same answer? Will we still get four for this value? Well, if we think about uh, this now, we've got 64 to the power of a third, so therefore the 3 becomes the root value, so we've got the cube root of 64, and the cube root of 64 is indeed 4. So actually you can simplify this fraction and then still get to exactly the same answer, so it's quite nice to see all the normal rules of maths being obeyed and followed by this. So, final questions, let's look at 256 to the power of minus 1 quarter. So we've got 256 to the power of minus 1 quarter, so let's go for a different colour again. So, 256 to the power of minus 1 quarter. So now we've got a negative power, so that's immediately going to make us think, right, that needs to be 1 over something. And then we've got 256 to the power of 1 quarter, so that power just comes down and acts as the power down here. But now we can look at this and think, right, well I've got 1 over uh, a number that's being raised to a fraction, so this value at the bottom uh, becomes the root number, so we've got uh, the fourth root of 256, and the fourth root of 256 is 4, so we end up with 1 over 4. So 256 to the power of minus 1 quarter is the same as 1 quarter, which is quite pleasing. Okay, now we've got 32 to the 3 fifths. So we've got 32 to the power of 3 over 5. So 32 to the power of 3 over 5, we end up with, if we look at this, we've got 32 to the power of a fifth. And then we're going to multiply that whole thing to the power of 3. So we've got 32 to the power of a fifth cubed. This obviously now, we're quite familiar with this hopefully by now, becomes the fifth root of 32. And then we'll end up cubing the whole thing. Uh, so the fifth root of 32 is 2. So we've got 2 to the power of 3. And 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, quite simply 8. So 32 to the power of 3 fifths is 8. And then finally we end up with 32 to the power of minus uh, 3 fifths. That's a bit messy, let's clean that up. 32 to the power of minus 3 fifths. So again the only thing that's changed here now is we've got this negative power so that means we're going to have 1 over whatever is there before, so 32 to the power of 3 fifths. Now again we could go through this whole process again putting in the bottom value and if this was an exam question then you would definitely do that to show that you fully understand uh, the principles of the laws of indices but because we've done it just here we know that 32 to the 3 fifths is the same as 8 so we end up with 1 over 8. So I hope that was of some value, and I hope that you now have a full grasp of the laws of indices. Uh, as a bonus video, I'm just going to include uh, an on-screen calculator, uh, proving that all of these are true just by inputting them into a calculator and seeing what the answer is. So please uh, click the link uh, to watch that video. So once again, I hope this has been helpful for you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.